Hello. This is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 155, 2 Kings, chapters 21 through 25. If you enjoy this podcast and the Skeptics Annotated Bible website, consider supporting us at patreon.com forward slash bfw. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. I sense that this is a momentous moment. Yes, it is. <laughs> What's happening today? We're going to finish the book of Second Kings. Yes! Yeah. So we're going to be done with kings and all of the kings that we've been talking about and struggling through for so long. Mm-hmm. That is wonderful news. Yeah. Well, except for... Yeah? The next book is Chronicles. Oh, my gosh. And it's kind of a repeat of what we've just done with the books of Samuel and Kings. <laughs> but we'll get through that quickly. Okay. Great news. All right. Should we jump in? Mm-hmm. Okay. Chapter 21. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king of Judah. He did evil things in God's sight. He built altars for the stars in God's house. There are stars in God's house. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so what that is, he's, they're worshiping stars. Oh. They're kind of astronomers now. Astronomers, astrologers, uh, sky watchers. <laughs> okay. That is probably not... Not okay. Not, it's not impressing God. N no. Um, he sacrificed his son as a burnt offering. Wait a minute. Manasseh? Yeah. That's what it says. Observed times... Used enchantments, consulted familiar spirits and wizards. This sounds like a fairy tale book. Yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's observed times? Observed times would be like doing astrology or oh, okay. things like that. Sort of the new age, well, maybe not, maybe not old age <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think it's astrology and... It sounds like paying attention to kind of the seasons and having a solstice celebration and mm -hmm. things like that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm actually not sure what it is. <laughs> um, and enchantments that means like special stones or I mean spells. Thinking they've got powers. Okay. Think, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and familiar spirits, of course, we're all familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. And wizards. Okay. Uh huh. And he set up a carved image in God's house. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Manasseh made the people do more evil things than the people whom God killed to make room for them. All right, so we're comparing evil things with God's killings. Oh, oh, so what this means is that when the Israelites, during the Exodus, when they came to the land of Canaan, yep. God had to remove, kill, a lot help of kill people. a lot of people who had all of these horrible practices. Many of them were the same kind of practices that Manasseh is doing here. Oh. Well, what he was doing was worse than the people that God had to kill to make room for the Israelites. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. God said to his prophets, Because Manasseh has been so wicked, I will bring so much evil on Jerusalem and Judah that it will make people's ears tingle. I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a threat, huh? He's going to yeah. wipe it like a dish, <laughs> turn it upside down. So, Steve, you're sure that that's in the Bible? Yeah, it's in the Bible. Okay. I have an imagination, but not that good a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, verse 18. Manasseh died and his son Ammon became king of Judah. King Ammon did evil in God's sight, just like his dad did. Like father, like son. <laughs> yeah. Ammon's servants killed him and made <laughs> Josiah, Ammon's son, king of Judah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we just went through three generations there in three lines. Yeah. And now Thank we, you, Steve. <laughs> now we've got to Josiah. Okay. Josiah. So uh, chapter 22, Josiah was eight. Eight years old when he became king of Judah. He did what was right in the sight of God, just like David did. Well, it's about time we get one who does that. Uh-huh. 
One day the high priest found the book of the law in God's house. He gave the book to the scribe who read it. The scribe then read the book to King Josiah. When Josiah heard the words of the book, he tore his clothes. Then he sent the priests and the scribes to ask God about the book. So they went to Huldah, the prophetess, who lived at the College of Jerusalem. Wait a second. There are two things in that sentence yeah. there that are blowing me away. Yeah. Huldah, a woman, is a prophetess. Yeah. And she lives at a college. The only college that's mentioned in the Bible, the entire Bible. In this spot right here. Yeah. So it's a woman prophetess who lived in a college. Now, I don't know when they say college, if they're talking like Harvard, Harvard or, you know, <laughs> or Yale or something, Stanford maybe. So she's teaching there, presumably. I, I don't know. She lived there. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if college means the same thing it does to us today. But that's the word that's used in the King James Version, and so I stuck with it. Good for you. So she said to them, so this is Hulda. She said to them, This is what God says. I will bring evil on this place according to the words in this book. But because your heart was tender and you tore your clothes, I have heard you. So you'll die in peace before I do all this evil on this place. All what evil on this place? Oh, well, it's coming. Evil is coming. All right, so wait a second. The book. What was the book? Oh, yeah, the book. The book of the law. So I guess that Josiah or somebody in the temple or maybe some priest there just wrote it down and made it up and said, hey, look what I found. Well, oh, <laughs> it wasn't like hidden for it. It's not. Well, like, we don't know. Yeah. Some guy found it. Uh -huh. But did he find it or did he just write it and say, hey, look what I found? They found something. The book of the law. So it yeah. sounds like the law, the, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, sort of, is what it sounds like. Uh-huh. Whether or not that's what this is referring to, I don't know. But somebody found a book, yeah. and Josiah got really excited about it and tore his clothes. And then he sent for the priest to explain it to him, and they end up getting this Hulda lady. Yeah, and Hulda said, uh-oh, this is not good for you. Yeah, I guess so. Going to bring evil on the place, but because you were tender and tore your clothes. <laughs> that tearing clothes finally <laughs> is paying off. I've heard you, and you'll die in peace before I do all the evil that I'm going to do to this place. That is Huldah the prophetess talking for God. For God, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so chapter 23. Josiah made a covenant with God, promising that he and the people would obey all the laws in the book. Then he burned all the vessels that were made for Baal, the grove, and the stars. He removed the priests who burned incense in high places to Baal, or to the sun, the moon, the planets, and the stars. He burned the grove ground the ashes into powder, and threw the powder on graves. He destroyed the houses of the Sodomites that were by God's house. He broke images and groves and filled them with human bones. He took bones from the graves and burned them on the altar according to the word of God. How do you burn a bone? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you do. <laughs> he killed all the priests of the high places and burned their bones on the altars. He persecuted people with familiar spirits, wizards, and anyone with any other religious beliefs. He was more faithful to God than any king before or after him. Yeah, notice that. More faithful than any king before or uh -huh. after him. Uh -huh. He was the best king ever. Except for Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the best king before or after. So there's a little bit of a problem here. There's different, <laughs> you know, different opinions here. Uh -huh. Coming from the same God. source. Yeah. <laughs> he was really good. And notice one of the things that he did here was he cleaned out the Sodomites, right? I mean, they're living by the house of God. So people think they were temple prostitutes. Oh. Sure, they were doing some hanky-panky in the temple. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. Verse 26. But God was still angry because of what Manasseh did. God said, I will abandon Jerusalem just like I did Israel. Huh. So remember, he abandoned Israel, and Israel got it yeah. from the Assyrians. Now he's going to abandon Jerusalem and Judah. Okay, verse 31. King Josiah was killed in battle at Megiddo, and his son Joahaz became king of Judah. 
he did what was evil in God's sight. So before we leave this, Josiah, notice that he died in battle. Even though the prophetess told us said that because he was tender and he tore his clothes, yeah. he was going to die in peace. That's what she said. Yes. But he actually died in battle. Yeah. Doesn't sound very peaceful to me. No. We just killed off Josiah, and he had a son named Joahaz, and he became king. Mm-hmm. I'm mean, going to be so happy when these kings are done. Yeah. He was imprisoned by the king of Egypt, who made Jehoiakim king. Okay, so... Jehoahaz was taken by the king of Egypt, and then the king of Egypt said, I'm going to make Jehoiakim king. Yeah. Jehoahaz died in Egypt. Jehoiakim did what was evil in God's sight. Surprise, surprise. Chapter 24. God sent Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to destroy Judah to punish Jehoiakim for the sins of Manasseh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a great line. Yeah. Jehoiakim died, and his son, Jehoiachin, became king. Or Jehoiakin, I don't know how you pronounce it. But it's really weird that he's sending the king of Babylon to punish Judah. To to destroy Judah. To destroy Judah, to punish punish Jehoiakim for something that Manasseh did, which was like a few generations ago. (laughs) Yes. Oh, well. Well, why change now? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. He does that all the time, doesn't he? Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for three months. He did evil in God's sight, just like his father. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, conquered Jerusalem and took its people captive, just like God said. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a big deal. This, yes. this, this happened. Remember how we said that in 722 BCE, the northern kingdom, Israel, was conquered by Assyria. Yeah. Now, this is 586 BCE. These dates are fairly well known because mm-hmm. these are historical happenings. Babylon defeated Judah. Yeah. And Specifically Jer- and Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah, conquered. Uh-huh. Okay. Conquered Jerusalem and took its people captive. So this is going to start the Babylonian captivity. Oh, that's a famous phrase. Yes, it is. Chapter 25. In the ninth reign of King Zedekiah's reign... The Babylonians besieged Jerusalem. Zedekiah tried to get away, but the Chaldeans caught him and his soldiers. Chaldeans are the Babylonians. Okay. They killed Zedekiah's sons in front of him, poked out his eyes, and carried him to Babylon. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. They killed his sons in front of him, and then so he could see that. And yes. then after they after he saw that they poked out his eyes. Uh... The Babylonians burned Jerusalem, including the house of God and of the king. They broke down the walls, took all the people away to Babylon. They took everything of value in God's house, including the pillars of brass, brass sea, pots, shovels, snuffers, spoons, fire pans, and bowls. But not the brass snake that was on the pole. That was destroyed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Phew, we destroyed that earlier. So this is another big event, is the destruction of the first temple. Sometimes Judaism is divided into the first temple, and there's a little spoiler here, second temple, Judaism. Okay. The temple was destroyed here when the Babylons conquered Jerusalem. Wow. The first temple, the temple that Solomon built. Yeah. I'm really learning some history here, Steve. Uh, well, some of it's history and some of it isn't. But, <laughs> but apparently the temple was destroyed uh, in 586 BCE. Okay. So, verse 27. When... Evil Merodach. Is that really a name? (laughs) Yeah. When evil Merodach became king of Babylon, he released Joachim from prison. He treated him well, even allowing him to eat at his table every day for the rest of his life. Which was a week. (laughs) No, I'm joking. And that's the 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 end of the book. Kind of a funny way to end. That's that's, the end of Second Kings. That's the end of Second Kings, yeah. Hey, listeners. You've made it to the end of Second Kings. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, we'll fly through um, First and Second Chronicles because they're mostly a repeat of what we've already heard in the books of Samuel and Kings. And so I'll only include anything that is new okay. that wasn't covered before. Wow. Thanks, Steve. Sure. And thanks, listeners. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.